If you guys have ever tried to do RBD simulations, then you'll know it's very common for pieces to not settle down as they are flat on the ground. So what I mean is, if let's say we had a simulation like this, it hits, these pieces have a hard time stopping. They're spinning around like this, they're just constantly moving a little bit, and it's a problem that you'll want to fix at some point or another, and it can be a real pain if you don't know how to fix this. So let me show you a quick tip on how I like to do this. Before we get into that, let me also tell you that I recently released Destruction 2, which is a six hour course that goes over all kinds of awesome RBD concepts. The fact of the matter is that you don't know what you don't know. And in Destruction 2, we take a look at a lot of things you might not know about when it comes to optimizing your SOP level RBD workflows. So definitely be sure to check out that course after you get done watching this quick tip. With that all being said, let's dive in. So here I have the simulation cached out as points. We can see the vase comes down, it hits. And what I'd like to do is create an attribute that goes from the ground on up. So there's a node for this that we can use called the attribute adjust. And if we do a attribute adjust floats and we set this to color to get us started, this will allow us to create a ramp that starts on the ground and gradually goes up. So what I'll do is I'll go here to the pattern type and I'll say create a line. And if I then press this multi-widget tool and kind of tumble around, here we can create that gradient. So I'll bring this over and we can kind of see this gradient on the ground right here. So it kind of gives you this general fall off as you move that around. So on the ground, I'm going to have this be white. And then as it goes up, I'm going to have it be black. So I'll create some kind of gradient right about there and I'll kind of look at the side here of the points to see how high up they go. So if I go right here and I just bring this down in Y until we're right about where these top centroids land, then that will be a nice location for this attribute. So now that I've set this to CD, now that I know where all this is, I'll now set this to our custom drag. And the idea is that I want to use this information as a custom drag against both velocity and angular velocity to slow the pieces down. Once I've set up this attribute adjust float, I'll just say control C to copy that, head inside the RBD bullet solver, and then paste that node. However, we can't do that because we are in DOPS. So what we need to do here is create a SOP solver and that will allow us to use the SOP nodes on the DOP information. So once we have the SOP solver, plug that into the pre-solve, go inside, and now I can actually paste that attribute adjust flow. Once I have that, I then need to figure out what I want to do with this information. So again, on the ground right now, we have a value of one, and as we go up, that value approaches zero. So in the back of my head, I'm thinking about creating a drag. I want it to drag a bunch on the ground and I don't want it to drag as we reach the value of zero. So if we think about how much we want this to drag, that can kind of be like what we set here to this max value, right? So if you're used to a pop drag or a pop drag spin, it's basically going to be this value. So if I set this to, let's say 0 0.05 right there to get us started. That means that the old value of one is now 0 0.05 and then we approach zero. Once I have that, I'll make a point wrangle. And all I need to say here is V at V, so velocity times equals in parentheses one minus at custom drag, which is the attribute we just made. If we copy this, we can also apply this to angular velocity. So V at W, that's how much things spin around. So V is how far it moves, W is how much it's spinning around. They both for right now have the same drag applied. That's almost everything we need, but we also need to go back to our attribute adjust floats and take a look here at this operation because right now we're adding to that attribute value over time. 
and if we're adding drag at every single frame, then eventually we get to values that are too big and it's going to just freeze all the pieces instantly. So instead of adding 0.05 at every single frame, let's go ahead and just say set always so that the value is always 0.05 when this goes to calculate. Now, let's say that I want to have these pieces settle down at a specific frame. What I can do is I can go back here to SOPS and I can figure out exactly where I want these guys to settle down. So let's say that on frame 192, that's where I wanna make sure everything is completely still. What I can then do is I can go to the RBD bullet solve here and I can simply go ahead and keyframe that ramp. So if I go here to the ramp, again, frame 192, I'm going to increase this value, maybe 0.25, and then at frame 144, 0.05, we just keyframe those guys, like so. Once that's all keyframed, let's cache this out and see what it does. And now, as we can see, that problem is solved. Now it does kind of settle down a little bit right here. It does very slowly move, but honestly, I think in most situations, that level of movement would probably be fine. Uh, also, let's just mention here that if there was something that was really bouncy on the ground, so let's say that something bounced really high up in the air, it's nice having that uh, gradient from the ground on up because that way it doesn't affect those bouncing pieces so that you're not slowing something down that's in midair. Uh, so that's also another reason why I like this technique. It doesn't really showcase itself here, but if you did have a situation like that, then uh, you would notice that it preserves those bounces fine, but it settles down on the ground as well. And there you have it. That is how you can settle those pieces down more effectively. For more quick tips and resources and awesome courses that'll help you learn Houdini in the easiest way possible, check out cgforge.com. Thanks for watching, and I hope you have a great day.